Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm sorry that this morning I got the problem with the Zoom. Then um, I had to just like um, fix it for a while. Now everything should be okay already. I test, I test it already, and it works. Huh? Unfortunately, sorry about that. Nah, huh? So um, today I'll finish um, talking about like the the um, designing phase, and then we we'll just like talk about like the next part. Nah, huh? okay. Right. Okay. Our last class, I have our last class. We talk about the um, the designing phase. I have. Hang on, just what belong. Let me just um, start the um, presentation first. Okay. Okay, our last class, I have, we talk about the validation rules. I have, we talk about the validation rules that we have to just um, do it before we just like finalize our input design. I have, okay, just um, let me share my screen. Okay, so um, the things that we had to do, I have, the things that we had to do is that um, at least uh, whenever we have to check for uh, um, the um, validation of the data to be input, uh, we have to check for sequence of data, the existence of data, uh, data type uh, that um, the user will input the data, uh, range or limit uh, of the data that you allow the users to enter into um, um, your screen, uh, um, reasonableness check. Uh, in order to check that whether the way that the data that users enter are like um, reasonable or not uh, for example if they just like have the um, what to say um, the gender that is uh, male uh, the things that they have to put uh, um, for the um, salutation should be must be mister uh, but if um, the user enter miss uh, and then um, um, she put the gender as male. That one, the reasonableness is wrong. Uh -huh. You should just like inform the user straight away. Uh -huh. Validity check and referential integrity. For example, if users enter all the courses that they would like to register, uh -huh, but they don't enter the user ID, the, sorry, the student ID, the referential integrity is wrong because you can't register without having the um, student ID uh -huh, in that form. Uh -huh combination check and batch control. Uh, so this one, we talk about the validity, uh, validation rules that we have to check for all the inputs that the users have to um, enter already. Uh, and we have to check before we accept that values into the systems. Uh, the next thing that we have to do uh, in terms of input design, uh, we um, have to know about like these terms in terms of the input technology. We may have batch input uh, what does it mean by batch input? But in batch input means that instead of letting users to enter one record at a time, you may allow the users to upload the files uh -huh, instead of entering one by one. Uh -huh. Let me just give you some examples. Um, for example, if you just like go to um, 7 Eleven uh -huh, and you can see that the what to say users uh -huh, or just like the staff in 7 Eleven, they when they have to um, check their stocks uh -huh. instead of just like um, going to type one um, one record at a time. Uh -huh. They have the batch input in which means in the past uh -huh, um, they had to just go to um, the shelf. Uh -huh. Firstly, in the morning, they printed out the product um, details first uh -huh, in the paper. Uh -huh. So they had like product number, uh -huh, product name, and the price so that they can just like check with the sticker on the shelf. After that, they go to the shelf. Uh -huh. um, for example, if they go to the shelf of, let's say, um, detergents uh -huh, and, and laundry, um, then they just like see um, the first product. Okay, if it is, set, let's say, if it is attack detergent, okay, um, original formula, uh -huh, um, 100 grams, the price 12 baht, let's say. 
they have to compare with the the products นะครับ on the shelf first that whether the the product is like putting on the correct um, location or not and then they start counting the number of items that they have for example they have five okay then they just write write number five um, in their sheet and do like this until they finish after that they just come back to um, the counter and then just um, start entering the data so they had to spend a lot of time in order to enter the data at that time but right now the batch input help them that okay when they have the um, barcode scanner they can just like um, what to say just like pick up one piece of product นะครับ in on that shelf scan the barcode นะครับ after that the system is waiting for the response นะครับ they count the number of item and then they just press the number for example this detergent they have five bags or five package of it they just press five and then press enter something like that นะครับ that is one example another one นะครับ you can see that whenever whenever we have to just like um, use the um, what to say the information like when they have to use the information such as um, in the sky system when they have to um, enter your grade in the past to enter the grade I had to enter one person or well, one student's grade at a time uh -huh. for example if I say that, okay, um, what to say? Um, Maylin get A, Bariwat get A, something like that. I have to press, I have to type the score first. Uh -huh. And after that, I had to enter the grade. Uh -huh. So what happened was this one wastes a lot of time of like all the instructors. Um, for um, the um, way that we did was that we said, okay, then, um, everybody can just like upload the file and I have it's a batch input I can just like prepare all of your grade for example I said oh everyone get a you got 95 out of 100 I just put in Excel first and then I make it as CSV file and then I upload once so that means instead of entering the grade one by one I just do the batch input I have this one is also apply in the reality because sometimes um, some of the transactions, for example, the sales information, if we have to print out the report, uh -huh, we don't, we may not do it on the daytime. So what does it mean? If you would like to summarize that, okay, in uh, on, on um, what to say, Thursday, the 12th of November, 2020, how much can we sell? Uh -huh. We don't do while the office is opened, but normally the offices or the companies normally do it around midnight because at the midnight time um we have like less transaction we have fewer transaction or sometimes we just inform our staff that around um 12 o'clock or midnight have the system will run the batch um will run the batch um processing that means all the inputs that have been waiting for the whole day will be processed around midnight, something like that. Uh -huh. So this can be the batch input that, I mean, in the reality, whenever the users, um, instead of having to enter the data one at a time, we can have the batch input as well. So um, that means users doesn't need to wait for the response from the computer uh -huh, or from the systems. They can just like prepare um, their um, files first, uh -huh. or maybe before they go home, uh -huh, before um, the office hours finish and on that day, they just submit the batch input, all the data that they process, I'm sorry, that they input for the whole day, we will be just like process in the system. Uh -huh. And for online input, this one is online data entry. Uh -huh. We do it one, um, we, we just like instead of um, preparing the things or the data in the paper first, we can enter the data directly into the system as the online ones. Normally it can be in terms of like um, the RFID tags or we may have magnetic data strips, for example. Um, you can see that if we go to some, um, let's say um, CD shops, uh -huh, they have the RFID tags. Um, that inform us or just like um, notify the cashiers that okay what is this album how much does it cost um, and also it is the security control as well because in the RFID 
นะครับ if you haven't paid for it นะครับ um, in the database it can also check that okay this CD has not been checked the status in the RFID นะครับ um, tax has not been updated so that means if you just like carry that CD out of the shop นะครับ um, it will be alarmed RFID is um, radio frequency identification นะครับ tax <coughs> tax normally it is in form of stickers นะครับ in the back it has just like um, the wires นะครับ including the mic small microchip as well so that means if you just walk past some um, antennas that they set up นะครับ similar to um, how the antennas look like it's it looks similar to just like the um, library นะครับ the front of the library normally they have just like the um, what to say the rectangle um, plastic um, gates that one is the antennas นะครับ the, it will send the um, radio frequency together with the power นะครับ to um, the RFID tags so that RFID tag can update the status and can send the data out to the system นะครับ okay so for the input technology นะครับ okay this one I just like show you for some of the input technology in the past นะครับ we use keyboard mouse pointing devices microphone นะครับ OCR นะครับ or scanner นะครับ MICR is scanner as well but the MICR or magnetic ink character recognition it was specially designed for um check นะครับ the the bank check นะครับ that um the check number has been printing out and then those numbers นะครับ can be scanned by using the MICR นะครับ it's used for the bank only and graphic input devices นะครับ um the evolving technology is like body motion detection Advanced voice recognition, นะครับ Biological feedback, นะครับ Embedded magnetic data, RFID, Advanced optical um, recognition and physical adaptation device. While the emerging um, emerging ones, um, this one, many of them are still in the research labs, นะครับ Brain computer interface, neural network and AI, Advanced motion sensors, two-way satellite interface, virtual environments and 3D technologies. Including the um, VR as well. นะครับ These are like the emerging input design that we may have in our information systems. But when you have to use the input design, um, whenever you have to use input device, you have to think as well that whether it's suitable for your business or not. For example, for the VR, นะครับ If you say that okay, is it suitable to be used with our accountants or not? It might not. It might not be usable because normally. For the accountants, normally they have to just like work with a lot of numbers and figures. The things that they have to do, and it's more fluent for them, is to use the keyboard, the numeric keyboard. นะครับ So instead of using the VR, let's imagine that if you have to wear, if you have, if they have to wear VR glasses, and they have to just like put their hands on the air and then just like control the things, นะครับ And move the um data around, something like that, um for the whole day, นะครับ When compare with another one that use keyboard, the keyboard might be faster. นะครับ for for accountants, but I mean for the game player, it might be in different situation or or for the executive, instead of just like um sitting in the meeting room and listen to the um presenter for presentation only, that you may just like use iPad. นะครับ um as a tablet that they can control. นะครับ The things that they want as well that might be better. Have it depends on the situation. The next one, have um, you have to trade off. Have for the input technology. Have unless source data automation is used, manual data entry is slower and more expensive than batch input. Have as I told you earlier because you have to do it um manually and do it one at a time. In this one, it said that because it's performed at the time the transaction occurs and often done when computer demand is at its highest, so that's why uh, many companies they decide to just like use the batch input um, on the time that is not the peak times. For example, during the midnight um, until before um, two or three a.m. in the morning, there is no online transaction to be done. So the the batch input can be processed at that time, and it's also faster. นะครับ The decision to use batch or online input depends on business requirements. Some of the businesses they say that they cannot use the batch input 
everything must be done online and interactive one that's okay นะครับ no problem at all depends on um, what the company wants after that to reduce the input of um, the um, to reduce the input volume นะครับ these are guidelines that help um, you นะครับ to design the input volume to be decreased นะครับ but it's not just like your own decision นะครับ you have to make you have to just like propose to the key users or the management นะครับ the guideline number one is um, you try to input necessary data only for some pieces of data that can be calculated นะครับ automatically you don't need to input for example instead of um, I mean like if you have the data like this I have if you have the data like this if you have price per unit if you have quantity if you have sales amounts you can see that actually the price per you I'm sorry the sales amount come from price per unit times quantity then you don't need to enter sales amount because of what if you enter price per unit and you enter quantity you can calculate for the sales amount anyway so this one if you decide like this you can save one field that you don't need to enter so this one um, just like would like to tell you that you just enter or input the necessary data only anything that can be calculated from our system you don't need to input or for example suppose you say that okay um, we have wet rates you can see that in Thailand everyone knows that the wet rate is 7% if it is 7% like this, you may have a table to keep the VAT, to keep the VAT rate. And then you read from that table what the rate it is, and then you calculate straight away. In this case, do not hard code the VAT rate. It is dangerous. What do I mean? In the past, before, before um, we had like, um, what to say, um, the policy, the, the law in Thailand. Um, we did, um, we had the VAT rate 7%. Um, so everyone hard code in that program that VAT rate is 7%. So that means if you would like to calculate the VAT amount, um, every time you just like use the sales amount multiplied by 7% in the programs. The problem was that once the government announced that okay the vat will be increased to be 10%. So it was a problem. It caused a trouble a lot for every programmers because we had to just like change every line of code that we had code um vat rate as 7% nah, up to 10%. And around like one or two years later, this one happened a long time ago. Nah, up, the government announced that they would like to decrease the vat rate back to 7% once again. Now, um, then we had to just like change the VAT rate in the program once again. But people realized that we shouldn't hard code. The, the better way is that you better have a table, have the database table to keep the VAT rate. If you would like to calculate the VAT amount, you multiply um, the sales amount with the value of the VAT rate inside the table. So that means Later on, if the government announced that the VAT rate will be increased or will be decreased, you just change in that table only. So this one, um, it helped us for two things. The first one, we input just necessary data only. You don't need to enter the VAT rate for every single record of data. Second one, um, the, this, um, the advantage of storing the VAT rate in the table, database table, is that when the government would like to change or announce the changes of the VAT rate, um, you don't need to change in every single line of your programs that are related to the VAT rate, but you just call the VAT rate from the um, database table directly. Okay, that is number one. 
Now number two, นะครับ do not input data that the user can retrieve from system files or calculate from other data. นะครับ this one is what I told you. Um, do not manually enter like the sales amount because you can multiply from price per unit and quantity. The third one, do not input constant data. นะครับ because actually constant data. For example, if you say that okay, um, number of hours that people work per day. Regularly, it's eight hours. So instead of um, because you know that the constant data is eight hour for everyone, uh, so um, you may just like enter the data into a database that okay regular working hours, uh, is eight hours, uh, that is one way. Or if you say that it is constant and it will never change for sure, so you just enter or you some of you may hard code as a constant. In the um in the program directly, นะครับ it depends, and use quotes, นะครับ to represent, นะครับ because I mean like um the quotes in here means that okay, um suppose you say that group of people who have like who have work as like um the um what to say the salary basis, นะครับ another one work on the commission basis, something like that. You may use like different quote of group of people, นะครับ instead. Uh, um, apart from that one, you can see that when we talk about the quotes, uh, a good, another good example is that when you go to the um, to the supermarket, uh, when you go to the supermarket, they never type your um, they never type the product name uh, into their systems when you come to buy a product. For example, if you want to buy a bottle of milk, uh, and um, in the supermarket, uh, the cashier will not type. Bottle of milk, Meiji brand, 250 ml, blah blah blah. No, why not? They scan the barcode. นะครับ That barcode represents the product code of milk. นะครับ Why don't they type? The reason is that if you use typing for the full name, นะครับ You may type it wrongly, and it wastes the time. And sometimes some names, นะครับ For somebody else. They may uh, mean the different thing. For example, um, for a bottle of milk, a, mag a bottle of magic milk, uh, somebody may type uh, magic milk bottle 250 mils. Somebody type a bottle of magic milk 250 mils. When they type differently, meaning are different. So that's why we just use the quotes because it's standard. Uh, so this one could help. As for um, reducing the um, number of input volume, นะครับ In term of output, นะครับ In term of output, we say that in term of output, นะครับ You need to control the security, นะครับ And also you need to have to control the output as well. The first one, นะครับ Output security, นะครับ um, If we analyze, นะครับ That our output นะครับ must be used by someone only นะครับ you need to find the security measures in order to help protecting your output นะครับ one good example นะครับ you can see that นะครับ everyone um, when you go to um, the campus and you want to print out um, some work some assignments on MUSC printer นะครับ let's say on fifth floor นะครับ building one you may just like go to the computer lab and print out your work, นะครับ Then when you go to the printer, how can you get to um how can you get your print out? So right now you can see that you have to tap your ID card right before it is printing. So this one is for security control because the first one, นะครับ If you print out and the paper is printed out. Other students can see your work as well, and then they, they may just like get your work. Once you go to the printer, you don't see your work anymore. So that's why you can see that um, in our university and also in um, like uh, many companies, they do the same thing. If the, um, if the um, employees or if the staff just like print out some work, when they go to the printer, they have to tap their card first 
so that the, the the work will be printed out or on some company they don't have to tap the card but they have just like the keypad you just enter your id then your print out will be printing so this is for output security some of the output you might need to log in first to see that, that output or if the output must be secure and it is printing out um, for example, the payroll that I told you on Tuesday, they may printing in, um, they may print the, um, what to say, the um, payment um, amount in a piece of paper that that paper is just like put in the envelope and then it's just sealed. So that means other people cannot see how much you get paid. This is for output security. Um, so um, the one who is responsible for the output control and security measures normally it is IT department. The IT department has to discuss with the management that okay um, in order to secure this piece of data how can we do that and um, also many company just provide the diskless workstation. Diskless workstation here means that you don't have um, DVD drive you don't have USB drive, sorry, you don't have USB port. But actually, okay, you may have the USB port, but you lock it. So it means that if like um, anybody would like to just like save that file, save the PDF file or any work into their own, uh, their own flash drive, they can't do it, something like that. And they have port protector. I have like USB port protector so that you cannot just like um, insert your USB drive or um, portable hard drive to copy the file. Okay, the next one, in terms of input security control, um, for in input control, every piece of information should be traceable back to the input data. So in this one, for example, if you enter the sales order detail, you should have like sales order number so that we know once you just like um, go back to check, you know immediately that, okay, this detail come from what order number. Apart from that one, you must have the lock and order to, in order to just like save as well that who entered that transaction at what time. Okay, for example, if the sales um, order has been entered wrongly and then it made the company the factory to produce that that lots of product that cost let's say two million bucks and if the customer said that hey i didn't order at all so the company has to trace that who just like key in this order and if they say that okay um the users the user id that used to log in and then enter the data is for me he did it on um, Thursday, the 12th of November at 10.47 a.m. So what will I do? I will say that, okay, I don't do it because I am teaching. I can't do anything about that. I don't have the time to do. And then because I record the, the, the videos as well, then it's just my proof. It's my evidence that I don't. Um, prepare or I don't do the sales transaction in here. So that means every piece of information should be traceable back to the input data. So that means you may have the, um, the original input data that might be in form of paper, or you may have the log in order to keep track of this information. You also have the audit trail so that every, um, every time when you tra trace back, you know immediately that who did it what at what time and I have something like that and also data security that means instead of entering or sorry storing the data into the plain text file I have we normally just save it in the um, database and then we have to encrypt it first I have so that means if the database has been stolen I have the data is all encrypted I have other people cannot see what what the data the, what the data was entered because you encrypt it already and then you have records retention policy for example um, you have to know that whenever you develop an information system you must not allow anyone 
including the system administration um, administrator to change the data in the database that is the rule นะครับ don't let anyone to change the data in the database manually so if they want to change the data they have to go to the system information system and do it in the correct step in order to do um, or in order to change the data for example they have to reverse the transaction นะครับ not undo นะครับ reverse the transaction for example if i just like go to the bank นะครับ if i go to the bank and withdraw 1000 baht of money นะครับ unfortunately the bank give me 10000 baht and they withdraw from my bank account 10000 baht you can see that if i said no no i don't want I want just 1,000 baht. They cannot receive your 9,000 baht back. นะครับ The things that you have to do is that oh, they will say sorry. Could you please write down a deposit note? นะครับ You need to just write down a deposit um slip that you would like to deposit 9,000 baht back to the bank. You can see that this one they will use it to reverse the process. Finally, you have nine thousand baht back into the bank. But the things that they do is that they cannot accept nine thousand baht straight away. You have to just write down a pay slip. I'm sorry, a, 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 a deposit slip to deposit back the money. That is for just like um, the way that we do. In order to just um, retain the data. Apart from that one, for the record retention policy, how long should you have to keep the data into the database? For example, we may say that our company said that in one year, the data will be in the database. After one year, you back up that data before the year end. For example, um, before Christmas time, all the data Many of the company they just like prepare to back up the data already, because you can see that for the um, the New Year's um, the the end of the year's um, break, we have around three or four days นะครับ for the public holiday holiday normally in each year. The things that they do is that they once the company stop working นะครับ um, the um, system administrator will start backing up the data. So that means the transactions data from 1st of Jan to 31st of December 2020 will be back up in the systems. When the company just reopened on 1st or 2nd of January 2021, the system is cleaned. So what does it mean? If they would like to have the data of 2020, it's in the backup tape or it's in the backup um, database. You just like um, bring it back and just that. Some companies say that, okay, every three years they back up the data. Uh -huh. But normally when it becomes the digital data, they never delete it. Uh -huh. They just back it up, something like that. Uh -huh. um, that is the records retention policy depends on different companies. Uh -huh. The data, uh -huh, you have to consider for encryption and decryption as well. Which piece of data should be encrypted? Normally the data, um, that is in the database right now, we encrypt the data. Uh -huh. But if the data that you just like use it as the catch in the text file only, you don't need to encrypt it at all. Uh -huh. Okay. So in this module, uh -huh, we talk about the purpose of system design. Uh -huh. That is to create the model. Uh -huh. That is a more um, physical model already of the information system. Uh -huh. This model will satisfy design requirements that were defined during system analysis phase and passed to the design phase. So we began with discussion of user interface design and his, um, human computer interaction concepts, uh -huh. um, different type of reports uh -huh. um, in terms of um, printing one, um, in terms of screen uh -huh. um, report that is on the screen, including detail reports, exception and summary report. Uh -huh. um, also, um, we learn about the different types of output as well, like whether it's on the screen, uh -huh, whether it's on the um, speakers, something like that. Apart from that one, uh -huh, we talk about input design. When we had to, um, when we need to have the source document, 
and we talk about various zones in that document as well. นะครับ And um, we talk about data entry screen design, นะครับ Um, including input mass, including validation rules that you have to check right, when the users enter the data in order to reduce data errors. Apart from that one, I talk about the batch input and online input. Right, that helps saving the time if you can just like um, do the batch input. Right, staff can do some other thing else right, instead of just like doing data entry one at a time. Right, um, input media and procedures and also input volume. Right. Finally, we talk about security, and we talk about the control that we need to have in both input and output. So these are the things that you have to consider when we um, have the input and output design, including the screen design as well. So um, when you have to design, normally the designing of the um, input and output doesn't have the Ready-made or the instant formula. It depends on what system you are working with, how secure that the system is needed. How secure that the system is needed. Okay, and that is all for this user interface design. Okay, so you can see that when we talk about the designing phase already. After you prepare the design, who can prepare? The first one, system analysts. Help together with the users. When the system analysts and the users um, finish designing already, apart from that one, some parts, for example, if we say that we need to have the website as well, in order to show um, to the users, um, to the uh, yeah, to the users, you may just like have to use the um, interface designer to help design this kind of part as as well. If users And system analysts, right, help together to design, right. It's just like the the practical ones that that the users will use for sure. But if you say that okay, you have to design the website in order to let the end customer to be attracted. For example, you say that okay, normally your company sell the the um construction materials products. You can see that okay. If you use the um, back office um, system information systems, it can be just like the the text based นะครับ screen นะครับ no problem. But if you say that you would like the external customer นะครับ um, in order to buy um, those kind of construction material products, your website นะครับ should be just like um, attractive so that you can compete with your competitors. In this case. You should have um, web designer, right, or interface designer to help. Right? Or if you say that okay for your company, you would like the system analyst to do this part. You have to send them for training, right, for the interface design. Because otherwise, right, the interface design might not look nice or not look attractive. It depends on like um what you would like your system to be, right? Okay, right. Okay, now we finish on the user interface um, um, module already. I'll move on to the next part. Nah, that is the um, system implementation. Nah, so for the file, nah, for the um, our um, handout, nah, it is in it is in uh, what to say, um, canvas already. Nah, it is in canvas already. So, um, everyone, please just download module number eight, managing system implementation from from our Canvas Cup, so that I can just like continue talking about it. Uh, it's module number eight, managing managing system implements. Uh, managing system implementation. Sorry, this one. This one. Okay, let me just like open up this file, and then we discuss. Um, we talk about this this uh, module. Uh -huh. 